Hey guys, James here from TCG University. Come back at you with some more great archive content. We're going to continue down our road of doing a set review for Alchemical Revolution. Uh, we're going to be talking about wind today. Sorry, I got a little distracted. Talk about wind today. Um, so honestly, make sure to check out all the other videos in the in the uh, content chain and the playlist, hopefully. Hopefully we made it into a place. If not, tell us and I'll make sure it gets in a playlist. But um, make sure to like, like all the videos, subscribe, let us know what you guys think, let us know what you want to see for the future, and let's get into it. Obviously, first of all, we got the Spirit of the Wind. It's a draw seven, as always, 15 health, cool little uh, cogs and gears on the sides, mm, very steampunky. Uh, first character we got is the level one Vanitas Obliviate Schemer. Uh, it's a champion cleric human. Vanitas can only level up into another Vanitas champion, so another one. That's neat. Uh, on enter, if there is another wind element card in Vanitas', Vanitas lineage, you glimpse four, which I w hope there would be. Oh, he's one of the. Yep, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's neat. I don't remember that. We did a fire video. I, we did a fire video. I don't remember that. Uh, Vanitas Oblivion. Uh, Vanitas can only level up into another Vanitas. Uh, gets Glimpse 4, like we said, 19 health, 1-1. One, one. Uh, very cool. Getting the Glimpse 4 is very good, especially in Cleric, which has a bunch of star calling. It's really, really neat. Uh, on to the 2, we got Vanitas Lineage. I wonder if he's going to be the big bad like Merlin. Ooh, interesting. Uh, Vanitas Convergent Ruin. 2-2 uh, two, two, as always, Vanitas Lineage Cleric. Uh, whenever you activate a spell, Vanitas' next attack without a weapon this turn gets plus 1. Oh, never... Ooh, I mean, that's even neater. He has one attack on his own. I like this. This is cool so far. Uh, on champion hit, if seven or more damage was dealt, cards that opponent materializes cost one more to materialize until the beginning of your next turn. Uh, plus one in your... This, so, going back down the line, obviously basic. I think this is a solid, like, midway three. This, on the other hand, I think is a five. Having the ability to always attack during your turn, it puts you at risk of retaliation, yes. But having the ability to always swing and always be able to at least get some damage, like plus two because you don't have a weapon, is disgusting. Uh, so he always swings for two, basically, if you want to. Uh, if he deals seven or more, he makes your cards cost plus one more. Seems very, very, very good. But uh, we'll have to see how it plays. To me, this is a five. I want to play this character, actually. Seems really sick, really nutty. Uh, on to the next one, Brewing Kit, zero cost. Uh, regalia item, cleric, accessory, tap. Sack three herbs. Look at the top six cards of your deck. You, if you reveal a potion item from among them, you put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom in any order. Um, I think this card's neat. I I wish it played the herb or like played the potion or something. I think sacking three herbs to grab a potion is really neat, but then you're pitching cards anyways to do it. I guess it would have maybe make it like a one cost and then do that maybe. I'm fine with that. Ooh, or maybe make it a one cost. Make it tap and then sacrifice how many er ever herbs you want to. And for every herbs, you get to look at the top two. So like if you sack one, you can look at the top two. And if you hit a potion, you hit a potion. I'm down for, I would have been down for that. But I think those cards all together are very rounded cards. It's a three. Um, I wish it was a little stronger because just, I feel like adding the potion after sacking three herbs makes it almost impossible to just play the potion, which is the idea of why you're adding it. But that's just a personal thing. Uh, renewable bullet here with turbulent bullet. It's a zero cost regalia item bullet. Uh, renewable does one damage. Tap you load it into a gun. On it, class bonus on hit up to two ally target allies you control get plus one. This card says that uh, you just play ranger instead of Lorraine, uh, and you just get the same buffs as you want. To me, this card this was what I, this is one of the cards I was worried about when it comes to what I was looking at, which is just. Why would you not play Ranger, which is just as good, but can play from distance um, and gets range buff with distance stuff? Not play this just to play the Lorraine deck. To me, it does the same thing. Uh, this card's a five, in my opinion. Hits, gives stats, Renewable comes back. Uh, armored Valkyrie, uh, Guardian Automaton, Steadfast, can be it can retaliate while rested. It's a two, two, three cost. Uh, as long as Valkyrie is retaliating, it gets plus two. So it swings for four on retaliation. This card's a four. Easy, easy four. Uh, the only reason it's not a five is it doesn't do anything else. It's real neat. It's a retaliating monster, but it still only has two health, so it dies very, very easily. It trades. It's it's built to trade. 
uh, Battlefield Spotter, ranged human ally, uh, class bonus on inner, uh, another target ally you control becomes distant. That is disgusting in Ranger, especially in Wind Ranger, especially as a Ranger human. I hate it already. Other units control gain ranged one, which is really neat. So you can give something ranged one, give it distant. It's real neat. Uh, this card's a this card's a four. The only reason it's not a five is it requires you to have ranged allies to be able to very be very very good. But in the I'm pretty sure in wind or in just like a wind human allies deck, it's gonna be a five. Uh, Cyclonic strike four drop guardian sword attack deals four damage. Uh, class bonus pays zero. Suppress target ally you don't control if you do. Uh, Cyclonic strike gets nag two. Uh, Press target ally you don't control. Oh, Gizneg 2, uh, activate this ability only once. You're able to suppress a target and swing at something for two if you want, which can sort of just get two dudes out of the out of way at once and let you swing through. Very neat style card. It's very versatile. I like it. This card's a four. Lets you do a lot of different things. Uh, we got Dominating Strike. Three cost, Cleric Fist attack. Uh, four, four damage. Uh, Vanitas bonus. Uh, you may reveal three wind elements cards from your memory rather than pay this card's rever rever uh, reserve cost. You may reveal three wind elements instead of paying three. Uh, weapons can't be used for this attack. That is disgusting. This says four, five, six. I hate it. Oh, this card's so cool. Uh, this card's a four. Uh, play this card for free. It's a four damage swing, six damage with him. Uh, I'm I'm in love with this character, honestly. Disgusting. Uh, next up, we got a uh, Drought of Stamina, four cost cleric potion item. You uh, you brew it by uh, using one spring leaf and two herbs, uh, two other herbs. You sacrifice the the drought and uh, you wake up target alley control. Drought of stamina. Hmm. Drought is not the maybe that's not the word I would would have used. Uh, but you wake up a target ally, which is really, really neat. Uh, gives you defense. Um, yeah. I, I don't know what ally you would want to wake. Unless you just have something you swung with that's big and you want to face tank. So they have to go through it, give it ton or something. Yeah. I think this card's like a 2 to a 3, depending on the cards you're playing. Uh, Enchaining Gale. It's a 2 cost cleric spell. Uh, action, fast action. Class bonus. This card costs 1 less, so it's a 1 drop in cleric. Uh, suppress target ally. Easy card says your opponent won't deal damage for a turn. Uh, lets you push through if you really need to. Um, really neat. I like it. That card's, this card's a three, maybe a four, four, maybe yeah, I'm gonna go four. Uh, three cost enhance hearing ranger skill fast action. Uh, cost as a two for rangers. Uh, look at the top three cards. You may reveal one wind card or a reaction card from among them. Put in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom. Uh, it's just a cycle card. Uh, it's a pay two cycle card. Uh, gets you a wind card or a reaction. It's pretty neat. It's okay. Um, I think, uh, what is it? Um, uh, Glimpsing with fairies is a little better, I think. Because it looks at top three. You can cycle how you want. That's whatever. Um, enhanced potency. Three cost cleric spell. Slow action. Costs one less for cleric, so it's a two drop. Uh, rest target potion. If you do, the next time you activate an ability of that potion this turn, Copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. Uh, yeah. oh, sure, you just double down on copying. Double down on potion. That's neat. I think this card's like a three. Uh, it'll depend on how you build your potions to make this card very good. Uh, Fertile Grounds. Three cost cleric spell. Fantasia. At the beginning of your rec recollection phase, summon a, co a token copy of an herb item you control. This card is a five in my opinion. Only because clerics absolutely need their herbs to do cool, to do really, really cool things. And this card just says copy an herb you already have, which says you can just start doubling up. It also is not unique, so you can just play as many of these as you want and start really doubling up on items. Uh, Imperial Alchemist. Two cost cleric human ally. On enter, you gather. Really good for cleric. As a class bonus, too. And then whenever you brew a potion, you put a buff counter on them. Really good, really good with... Uh, Cleric, so he's just going to keep buffing and then gets to swing a lot. I like it. Uh, next up, we got Purse, Relentless Raptor. It's a three cost Ranger Human Unique Ally. Uh, range two, and then tap, suppress target ally, item, or weapon. Activate this ability only if Purse is distant. 
Uh, this says uh, if you can distance this during your opponent's turn, says it's able to uh, suppress like weapons so they can't hit you, get rid of items that are holding you back. Um, if they if they're tappable or something like that, really really good card. Um, I still think it's I think it'll depend on like the style of deck you're playing. Uh, I think this card's like a three, but has the potential to wean into like four and fives. Uh, we got Rapid Reload, a three cost Ranger skill, fast action. Class bonus has efficiency, so this card's free uh, under Ranger. And then you materialize a bullet from your material deck for free. That's neat. I like it. This card's a four. Doesn't overly do anything. You have to, it, it's obviously free, but it doesn't get you anywhere. You still have to have the targets to be able to do it and be able to do something well with it. So, But still a nutty card. Uh, five cost Repelling Palm Blast. Man, I'm loving everything about this dude. I'm loving everything about this dude. Return allies with two attack or less to their owner's memories. Oh, it's so good for warrior allies. And then floating memory. Oh, it's so good. Um, I'm, I'm loving this dude right now. I might, my war, my uh, wind allies deck might just become this dude under cleric. Either that or ranger, man. Ranger's nuts with it too. Uh, next, uh, this card's a, this card's a four. Um, it's still a five cost, and so you have to pay it out of hand. It has floating memory, so it's decent if it gets in your discard pile. Um, but you have to have a bunch of dudes on board to make this really worth, like really, really worth it. And it kind of just like board resets. But uh, who cares when you have a dude that swings for four, like two on his own every turn? Neat. Uh, next up, we got Rose Eternal Paragon. But who cares about this art? We got this one. Uh, Rose is a unique ally, Guardian Warrior Automaton, four cost. Has intercept, true sight, and fast activation. She's a hand trap. Uh, level two on enter, you may change the target of an attack to Rose. And then if you do, Rose gets plus one health, so she becomes a two four on basically on enter. She's a fast action. Your opponent swings, and you go, cool. Hand trap. Swing your attack over here. You won't deal enough damage to kill her. She lives. You still got to intercept, true sight, two three on your next turn. Um, I think this card's really neat. Uh, this card's really good at, like, uh, trading when your opponent's not ex expecting it. Uh, so, I, and I really like the art. She's real cool. She's more, she looks like a Valkyrie kind of girl. I like it. Uh, this card's a, this card is, man, I think this card's a four. Um, the fast action makes me want to make it a five. That That's like, it really does. But I feel like just having a two, four for a turn with true sight intercept is not, just really enough to make it a five. The activation almost does, really. The fast act almost makes it a five for me, but I feel like you have to have the way to control the board state while you're doing it to make it really worth it. And it's a class bonus activation too. With Warrior, it should just a guardian. I'm so upset. I don't I don't I don't want like Lorraine having the ability to use this. I, I really don't. But that's just a me thing. Um yeah, still a four. I don't think it's good enough to be a five yet. Maybe something makes it better. Oh, well. Uh, Rousing Slam. It's a four-cost Guardian Sword attack. It's a four-damage attack. Uh, class bonus at level plus two on attack. The attacker gains Vigor and Taunt until the beginning of your next turn. Um, I don't know why it says the attacker. It should just say your champion or on attack gain Vigor and Taunt. I don't know. Real weird. Um, but giving Vigor and Taunt to your character is very, very good, especially our Guardian. Uh, it's going to be the, one of the main ways to play him is to make sure you attack just him and nobody else. Uh, but four damage attack is really, really good, and especially having Taunt and Vigor stands him back up so you can retaliate later if he's able to in terms of, like, uh, I guess this class bonus so it won't matter. So I don't know why you'd want, maybe if you have the ability to swing again, I don't know why you'd want the Vigor for, uh, oh, the attacker gains Vigor and Taunt until the beginning of your No, you're the attacker, yeah. So uh, I don't know why you would need Vigor for your character, but that's just a me thing. I know, like, Lorraine could use it pretty well, but I don't know. Uh, other than that, we got... Oh, I guess you could attack again, right? You can swing twice if you're ready. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I have to, I have to double-check that. Maybe that's why you get it twice, you can swing twice, still have time. Oh, well. Uh, next up, we got... Uh, this card's like a 3 to 4, depending on how you play it. Uh, we got Shimmer Cloak Assassins, a 3-drop assassin automaton ally has stealth. It's just a 2-2 with stealth. Um, honestly, this card feels a little underwhelming, especially with all the cool stuff going on in this set. Having a 2-2 with stealth, which I, I talked about earlier in like water. I don't 
see stealth as a problem right now. Um, so maybe more stealth will make it better. Uh, but I just don't see the reason to need it, especially on just a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, this card's like a 3. I under, it's just me, mediocre down the road. It's not terrible. It's not great. I wish it was better, but I, under, but I understand it could really be worse. It could be a 1-1. One, one. It could be like a 2-1-1 one, one with stealth. Like it, it could be. So like I'm fine with just 3 for that. Next up is Spell Shield Wind. Four cost, cleric spell, fast action, reaction. Class bonus, it costs one less. Cleric has a bunch of those. So three cost that says the next time damage will be dealt to your champion. Prevent that damage. If three or more damage were prevented this way, you put a buff counter on an ally you control. Uh, man, cleric allies with this one dude is seeming very good. If I can prevent damage, just put buff counters on everybody. Uh, this card's, uh, I'd actually say this card's probably a four, uh, especially in cleric. Uh, maybe a three in regular, four in cleric. Uh, being able to protect your dudes and give stats to things is really neat. Uh, vanishing shot. One drop ranger bullet item. Tap it to load it into a gun. Uh, an unloaded gun. Uh, then on ally hit, you return the hit ally to its owner's hand. Uh, this is really cool. It's just like clearing a board state. If your opponent has some cool board that you can't get through because they're too big, too healthy, like five, six drop health dudes, you just bounce them back to your turn, to their hand. Who cares? Deal them two, bounce it back. Who cares? I think this card's very good at getting things out of situations. Um, I think it'll depend on um, what dudes do you really intend to hit with this? Because honestly, I, there's only a couple dudes I feel like you need to. Like, um, you have uh, the Majestic Spirit. You have um, you have the Dragon from last set. Uh, you have a couple of water things from set one that are really, that get really big. You have like Big Bear and um, just a couple of things that get above three to four. Like, so I don't know what you would absolutely need it for, but I like that there's some versatility in this. Uh, next up is, Ve oh, it also gets rid of taunt stuff, so that's really neat. Uh, Veil Dash, it's a four cost ranger skill reaction. Uh, cost two less than ranger as a class bonus, so it's a two drop. Fast action. After two target units become distant, then reveal any number of wind element cards from memory to prevent the next X damage that would be dealt each of those units or uh, this turn where X is equal to the amount of wind cards revealed this way. This card says protect your board. Um, it's as good as veil, Veiled uh, Spirit or whatever, Veiled Winds, which just says prevent a bunch of things. This card's very, very good. Uh, honestly, this card is uh, like a three, three to four in regular, five definitely in Ranger. Uh, next up, we got Whirlwind Vizier. Uh, it's a three cost cleric autom automaton ally class bonus. The vizier gets plus one health, so it's a two three in cleric. Uh, pay three, tap, and sacrifice her. Uh, destroy target non fractal Fantasia. Uh, this thing can clear out stuff like your uh, not domains, but it clears out stuff like uh, this fertile grounds. And uh, I don't think there's many fur. There's not many in wind. Wind doesn't have many uh, Fantasias. I realized. Because last set, they got the anti-Fantasia stuff. So, but yeah, you clear out stuff like Fantasia's, fra uh, Fractals, stuff like that. Really, it's a very good techie card, but I don't see you really needing to main it right now unless Fantasia can become a real problem. Uh, next up, we got, uh, sorry, I think this card's like, I think this card's like a three, four sideboard, uh, a four sideboard card. In, in your sideboard, this card's like a four. Gets really good versus other decks. Uh, Wild Growth Elixir, three cost cleric potion item. You brew it with two herbs, and at the beginning of your recollection phase, put an age counter on it. Uh, you sacrifice it and put X buff counters from target ally where X is the amount of age counters on it. This card says you make one dude really, really big if your opponent doesn't take care of this item. And then you swing for game with it. This card's really, I actually really like this card if you're able to protect it. Uh, this, card's a, this card's a four in my opinion, though it is a little slow, so I could, I could see it become a three. But there's not too much that takes care of items, so I can see it being a five as well. You play this turn one and just sit there on buff counters and then go, well, this has six buff counters. I've already hit you for like seven. You got about four health in between it. I'll hit you. Seven, six, that's what, uh, 13. So my bad. You hit you hit him for six. So this has six counters on it. You hit him, you're kosher. You're going. Uh, but yeah, I think it's really good. Uh, Wind Bless Arba Arbalist? Arbalest. Arbalest is what I think it is. Uh, three cost ranger human ally has range two. And then class bonus has vigor. Because uh, that's what it needed. A ranged human with vigor. Uh, a 2-2 two, two that hits for four that has vigor is really, really good to me. 
seems very very neat um i'm honestly getting real tired of the range the human thing going on with wind uh, it's, i think it's really annoying especially with the last meta being nothing but lorraine level twos and not much else but we'll see uh maybe maybe with this set things will like spread out some more i just noted that uh Wind has a lot of stuff that just buffs the already nutty deck. Uh, this card's like a four. I think having Vigor is really nice. Range is very good. It's a two-two, and it's not that expensive, and it fits into the human ally uh, like engine deck already. Next up is Windblessed Gatekeeper. It's a two-cost human guardian. Has taunt, and then on enter you may pay two, and if you do, put a buff counter on target guardian ally you control. This card's very very good in Wind Guardian, as it has taunt, makes you attack it. And you can pay an extra two, so it's a four cost that you can, say, put a buff counter on something else. It's really, really good in Guardian. Uh, I'd say this card's like a three, four if you have a good deck going, especially with humans being a deck you can run anyways. I'm sorry. I really don't like that deck. I think it's unimaginative and is very toxic for the game state and growth of the game, in my opinion. Because uh, who wants to play against a deck that doesn't even play level threes? Uh, six drop cost winds of retribution action guardian skill class bonus level two plus uh, it, at, For that class bonus it costs two less to activate so it's a four cost at level two or more uh, Allies you control get plus two attack until the end of turn really really cool at doing the human ally thing <laughs> Coming and keeping it going uh, I think this card's really solid three. I think it's a little slow I don't think it'll matter as much you play like maybe a one of it so that way if you need to push a little bit because honestly giving plus two to everything is nutty but paying four for it instead of having an ally on board may seem a little slow we'll see how it goes i i mean i would play at least one of it so and then the last card for wind young peacekeeper it's a three cost guardian human ally has foster uh in case you guys since we didn't talk about it yet at the beginning of recollection phase if this ally hasn't been dealt damage since the end of the previous turn it becomes fostered Young Peacekeeper gets plus one, plus long as one as long as it is fostered and has a class bonus of floating memory. Uh, Foster's a really cool keyword, which is just usually you have to have it on your dude, and then uh, your dude ha usually has an ability that it gets if it's fostered. So like this one says, it gets a plus one, plus long as long as it's fostered. Uh, there's one in water that was like you, get, you put a buff counter on something if it's fostered, which is nutty because it could just stay fostered and keep giving counters. That's another thing. I really like water, so. Uh, but I really like this card. This card's really good. Foster's a very cool keyword that uh, Guardian has because it, it, use, it uses himself as a face shield to foster other things by blocking. So I really want to see how that mechanic works. I don't think I'm going to... I don't think I'll end up playing it too competitively, but I like the way it works. Uh, let me know what you guys think because obviously we're at the end of it. Let me know what you guys think about Foster. Um, honestly, the standout for me is I think this card's disgustingly good. Um... I think this card's disgustingly good. I think this card's disgustingly good. I think she's cool. Um, I like the fast activation. Um, I wish I could pull arts of her. Uh, but other than that, uh, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Check out the other videos in this playlist. Uh, let us know what you guys want to see for other final, uh, other Grand Archive content. Plus, I found fantasy. Sorry, guys. Other Grand Archive content. Uh, let us know what you think about my hot takes. If you like my hot takes, hate my hot takes. Don't like the way I feel about wind allies right now. Up to you. Uh, <laughs> flame me in the comments. Blast me. Put me on blast. I don't care. Uh, I don't like the deck. I think it's bad. Uh, bad for the format. I don't think it's a bad deck. I think it's the best deck of that format. I think it's bad for the. I think it's bad for the meta in general. Bad for the game. Uh, other than that, let me know what you guys think. And as always, stay alert.